All right, I've been learning positive self-talk. Positive self-talk, and it's a magical thing. When you start getting good at it, it was bullshit at first. It felt like bullshit at first. I think back to about a year ago, on a run, talking to myself positively. It just felt corny. But it's really beautiful, it's really magical. 365 days later, or so just about, it's a really magical thing. Uh, one thing I'm thinking about right now is is imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. So positive self-talk helped me realize imposter syndrome, understand what it is, understand that I that I that I have it <laughs> in a in a pretty big pretty big ways it feels like. But no, for real. The positive self-talk, I said it before, it helps you break the fourth wall. It helps you break the fourth wall so that your brain can acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge reality from your perspective. You feel me? Breaking the fourth wall, breaking the fourth wall for surely helped me understand imposter syndrome. You feel me? Because I knew I've been depressed. My mother passed away when I was 21. I was very young, broke my reality. She was my best friend. I had so many emotions to wrestle with and deal with, but imposter syndrome made me believe that I shouldn't be depressed for too long or, I, or I'm not really depressed because somebody has it worse than me. You know, somebody has it worse than you out there. I grew up playing basketball, so that was always a big thing. Like somebody's always working harder than you. Someone always has it harder than you. You always have to you know, with sports, sports teams and stuff, that's one of the fucked up parts about sports is like the manipulation of the brain to work harder, you know, instead of it being about fun or 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 winning just because winning winning from a more from a healthier place. You know, I don't think sports has to be so unhealthy, but that's probably one of the ways is kind of the manipulation in order to get harder work out of self or harder work out of others, you know, as opposed to just so to it just being genuine, you know. Anyways, the imposter syndrome helped me, I feel like, tell myself it's okay. I mean, breaking the fourth wall helped me deal with imposter syndrome so that I could work through my depression. I could work through my sadness, work through my grief and my anger, you feel me? And, and justify and validate these things to myself. I didn't do a good job of validating myself and positive self-talk, breaking the fourth wall. Has all has all helped me increase these skills, find new ways to to, to develop these skills. You feel me? And, and and I'm getting rid of negative self talk. You know, I still have it all the time, but I'm getting better at breaking the fourth wall to acknowledge when I'm doing good positive self talk. When I sh I'm can acknowledge when I shut the negative self talk down and don't let it get going too far. I can acknowledge when I have a bad day and a bad week with it. You know, and, and keep it pushing, knowing that I'm better than the previous day. You feel me? One day at a time, we get better with time. Uh. But, yeah, negative self-talk, shame. You know, I feel like shame and imposter syndrome goes hand in hand. So this is probably the last part I need to talk about. Shame and imposter syndrome go hand in hand, you feel me? So you really got to throw both of those shits away. Throw both of them away. Throw it away. Because they don't help you heal. They don't help you learn. They don't help you grow. You feel me? Shame isn't going to help you heal, learn, or grow. You feel me? It may cause some sort of change sometimes or not at all, but it doesn't help. That change isn't going to help you heal or learn or grow. You feel me? So shame uh, and negative self-talk, imposter syndrome, these are all things that I think get in the way of, of a person healing, dealing with their pain, problem solving, you know, like their brain ability, their ability for their brain to develop problem solving skills that help them in their specific life and situation. Like, like, yeah, these are the things that I understand can get in the way in scary ways, even scary ways, like really scary ways. It's really important. That's why I wanted to talk about this. It's really important to acknowledge what you're going through to develop the positive self talking for me and to get imposter syndrome and negative self talk out of there and to really check it, you feel me? Because cause when it comes to, where I start, you know, this it comes to self-harm, violence on the oneself, you know, you really don't, you know, you really want to validate onto yourself, you know, what you're going through, what your reality, validate what your reality has been, you feel me? Like, understand it for you, you know, and, and even, even if you have to talk to yourself about it, just validate it, validate it to you so that you can get better at you know, the very serious things, you know, the scary things, the darker things, you know, that 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 negative self talk and imposter syndrome are no big deal. It feels like on a on a day to day or a simple level or just like, you know, like any simple inconsequential situation, 
You feel me? But imposter syndrome and negative self talk, you know, that's that's what comes in, you know, in, in the darkest moments, you know, like when you're more depressed than you've ever been before, you know. You're you're surrounded by feeling like an imposter, you know, you're surrounded by the negative thoughts in your head, you know, and it doesn't it feels like you're so far gone, you know. I I know what it felt to feel like so far gone where that's only all that you feel, you know, is is the negativity, the darkness that you've been through, the ugly, ugliest things that you've been through, the ugliest thoughts that you've ever had, just start to multiply and surround you and combine with this imposter syndrome that tells you that everything you have been through, you know, that wasn't too bad or, or, or your your perspective of it doesn't matter, you know. Your perspective, your own perspective of what you've been through doesn't matter. I feel like that's what imposter syndrome felt like for me is, you know, my own perspective of of my pain doesn't matter. You know, it matters what the world thinks, what the people next to me, the people around me, you know, think of me, and think of how I deal with my pain, and think of how I live my life. But imposter syndrome and negative self talk had me feeling like I can acknowledge now, I can see it now. Like I didn't, I didn't give a fuck what. I thought about it. I didn't give a fuck with my brain and my perspective, you know. I care to listen to my own brain and care to define my own perspective, you know. Yep. Anyways. I love you more every day. What can I say? Uh, I talked to angels, changed the angle. Call a new perspective. Uh, close your eyes and listen to music. If you are able to, it is healing. And if you are not able to, I apologize for making this suggest su suggestion. But I encourage you to listen to, you know, I encourage you to consume black art. Black art. Black art. It is truly revolutionary. Black art is truly revolutionary. You can with time, with intention, and with your heart, and with your care, appreciate some black art. You feel me? There's not a lot of things more revolutionary to do on this earth. You feel me? Not a lot more things more revolutionary to do underneath American capitalism than to have love, care, time, and intention for black creativity and black expression. You feel me? Support one another. Support you first, you know. Tell yourself you love you first. Because when you do that, you can figure out the best ways to tell the people around you that you love them. You feel me? But if you don't love you, then you're going to have have, some, have have a difficult time defining love when things get hard. When things get hard, you have a hard time defining love for you. So, love you, love you, love you first, first, first. Not the G-O-D. Not your girl. Not Jesus. Your mama, you love you first and foremost. And that teaches you how to love all life that's close, one day at a time. One day at a time. It ain't supposed to be easy. Maybe the hardest part is that we just gotta keep it simple. Love you, one day at a time.